Oh, I mean, the, hard, the hardest part is you sit there and you gotta tell everyone, right? You're like, made one mistake, and that one little mistake completely took me out of the race. Like, I would say that was the most nervous I've ever been, was just going in these sand dunes, and my heart, I've never had my heart race before driving like that. I, I equate it to what I call the Dakar drug. You've got to let the race come to you. You can't push the race, you can't force the race. Not a lot of people go out there. There's no tracks, there's no one around. You're by yourself. For sure there will be pressure on uh, anybody who races for their country. You know, there's so much that can go wrong. That's really, for me, the main thing is, yeah, we got pressure to win, but we can do it. I mean, dude, yeah, everything's humbling. I mean, it's just a learning curve. Dude, I'm an American. I've never, I didn't even know what a road book was until March of 2018. It's just cool. I just like everything about it. Whoa! Living the dream. Living the dream. Gonna come and see you. Really nice to meet you. Yeah, man. you too. Good Hello, oh. good? Good. It's so new and exciting that, like, it's hard not to just be excited. I mean, the, the situation with not very many Americans uh, racing on four wheels over there, <laughs> just the whole thing. Everybody flew in from their appropriate country. Kind of the whole last minute hurrah before we uh, pack it up, send her down south to Peru. In Peru uh, and in Africa, I race for South Racing. Uh, Scott, he owns cars that people can rent. People own cars that he services. He takes care of everything. Casey said to me, oh, I want to look at racing Dakar. So I said, okay, come to Mazuga. That was Morocco in, uh, in April. So this is where it's complicated. Scott speaks English, and then the rest of them speak Portuguese. First thing I gotta, you, you've gotta have luck. We can be as prepared as possible, but we've gotta put it together. My co-driver doesn't even speak English. You've gotta, you gotta respect the race. There are certain situations that, you know, there's times you're like, I don't even know what I'm doing here. I, I, I felt like I wanted to push the car to see how hard I could, and I didn't know how fast or slow I was, so uh, we went into a wash and couldn't find a waypoint, and got lost for 25 minutes first day, like, couldn't even believe it, like, I was so disgusted, and, dude, I was so green that my strategy just wasn't right. You can't push the race, you can't force the race. If you try and force the race, you're gonna be on the trailer going back home. Uh, second to the last day, I think I had a four minute lead overall. I got on the wrong road, navigational error, we got on the wrong road. And, dude, I was in the dust and I was driving too fast. Yeah, I hit a ditch, like 40 or 50 miles an hour and ripped the rear suspension out of the car and like it ended my rally right there. Part of the, the sport, but it's also part of the learning curve because it's the same as, as if, if we as a team were to come to, to race in Baja, we'll get bloodied the first time out. I mean, it's just, dude, you're just bummed and disappointed. So, I mean, the, the worst is having to explain what happened over and over again. It is what it is. From a team side, I'm not going to put pressure on Casey to, to win. I think he puts enough pressure on himself. I think Dakar, your biggest challenge is not to beat yourself. What? What are you looking for? What size? They said to try the size. Wow. Let me see what we got here. We started the project last year that we took two cars to Dakar with Ronaldo and the second car with Leo Lahori. Sort of, we would give it our best shots. To your liking, that's a brand new large. Large? Yeah. Oh, no! No! <laughs> no large. We, we had a great result. We bought the car home. We finished uh, Dakar, won it. I, don't, I think that's the biggest size we have here. No See, yes, but no pasa aquí. The, uh, no. Too grande. See? It's a chico. He's got too grande of a head. And since then, the, the project has just grown and grown and grown. Going into Inca, that rally, I was gnarly nervous because the sand dunes are four times the size of Africa and there's nothing that can top that. It's insane. They shape your life. You get hooked on it once and it's very, very difficult to let go. The goal was to learn. To go and do these type of rallies is all about learning. Everything we can do to learn and really just get myself in a position where I felt comfortable.
And what can you say about the tracks here? Uh, the tracks in Peru are pretty crazy. The sand dunes are very, very tall, so. I mean, it's one of those situations, I'm either going to be good at it or I'm not going to be good at it. I just felt that I needed to have a perfect run. And I think that's the thing is how you rebound from that bad day, how you fight back. That's how you win a Dakar. No issues. We just drove all day. We had, uh, we just played smart. So focusing my efforts like we did and having a good run, I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely helped to redeem myself. See, the whole team did a phenomenal job and three days, no problems. And I don't know, it looks like we probably beat the competition by over an hour. So I'm pretty stoked to be an American here in Peru and racing. So I'm stoked for number one. For me, get to the finish line, full blown, huge victory, right? No, I had to be in an airplane two hours later to fly to another event. Crazy big ceremony and I saw none of it. Dude, I put myself in a situation like I have, I have other obligations that I have to do and it sucked. Sitting in the airport like super bummed. For me, the main thing, he came, he learned. And I think that's it, you need that team around you, you need a good base to start from. And if you've got the people you trust around you who are there to just bring them through that race, I think that's what you've got to rely on. And on those difficult days, uh, or when the pressure's too much, those are the guys that are going to be there to just ground you. Finally at our uh, team, first team dinner, as the uh, Wong Soon As You Can't Am team, so I'm excited. I know it's all unknown, no one, uh, no one around my team's been to Dakar, so it's all, it's all new. After this is all over with, I'm either going to enjoy it, want to do more, or never want to do it again. Locked and loaded, ready to go. We have the deep fryer. Oh, we're just loading up for the Thanksgiving weekend. I mean, it's been wide open for about a month. Time for some fun. Fun with the family. Hey, who said you could drive? Are we going camping? I've definitely grown in the last nine months as, as a person just because, I mean, this is, this is like the real deal. The race is a month away and I'm ready. I'm ready to win Dakar. I'm ready to take on Dakar and I'm ready for the challenge.